Welcome back to What RT Noobs with General Disturbance. This is the T92 HMC, the Tier 10 American SPG, located on the south spawn or southwest spawn of Nebelberg. And this is a grand battle map. Well, the name of the player is Did You Feel It? And he's got one mark of excellence on the barrel of his T92 already. Now, back when this video took part or took place, the game took place, it was in uh, 2017. The um, Grand Battle maps were relatively new. In fact, actually, they were in beta. So, this is basically Wargaming's first attempt at making a large Grand Battle at Tier 10. You can see he's got some company because there's a Death Star up here already. The FP215B 183. And there's some other RT just along the way. A Concord gun carriage, a batch at 15558. So he's going to have some company. It's very slow RT because it's based on the hull of the T26E3 Eagle 7 which is basically a Pershing hull but with a huge 24 centimeter gun on top of it. Now this is the biggest gun fielded in World of Tanks but it's not the biggest artillery gun that you saw in action during World War II. They had bigger ones. Just Wargaming has uh, neglected to put them into the game. They were, of course, arty guns, so uh, <laughs> that's probably one of the reasons why they're re reluctant to put them in. First round's out, and he's not sticking around to actually find out what happened to it, which is a pity, because we then missed out on seeing what happened. And Well, he might have hit the target, he might have missed it. We'd need to know what happened to the shell, but did you feel it wants to move because he fears counter-battery? Now the reload for this RT is fairly long. By the book it's 46.38 seconds, but it all depends on uh, on your configuration. If you've got uh, a rammer, you've got a good crew. And we tend to keep the clients which actually, or back then we kept the clients which didn't have the, the mods and therefore we can't see the actual count timer. Object 140 hiding behind that cliff. I don't think did you feel it's going to get a shot onto that guy. But there are some other targets nearby that he could actually aim at. Some of them in the town. Well, he fires this round in at the Object 140. And he did get some stun. And he also did some damage. 361 hit points of damage and some stun. And changed his position. Now I think I will take charge of the camera just in case he wants to change position quickly after he makes a shot and therefore we miss out on what actually happened. Now this was back when team damage was capable so some of his shots will be, they will be, well he will check his fire if he thinks that he might actually hit one of his own teammates. Well that one hit the, the tower. He's not moving from this position. There are quite a few targets that he could aim at to the east at the moment. Those of you who don't play the Grand Battle will probably be familiar with this map from the Halloween mode that took place in, uh, I think it was, what, three years ago? where there was um, some zombie tanks that have kept on appearing. Oh, that's a bombardier! He just took out a Gorilla 15 and an FP215B183, the Death Star, with one shot. They must have had fairly low health. There's also, it appears to be, a heavy tank that crossed, tried to cross the lake and drowned in the process. Just the other day, Steve Walsh made a joke, actually. He said, um, 
uh, had an arty player reading a book called Total Swimming. Well, arty players don't tend to learn how to swim. Mostly they, uh, they read books like Diving for Beginners. No, I'm only joking. It was a very funny joke, actually, the way he put it. But, uh, of course, true arty players never try to drown themselves. They keep fighting until the bitter end. Because, after all, you want as much damage on the enemy as you can. So it really does matter that you, uh, you get as much damage on the enemy. Rounds out. He was trying for the IS-4. Oh, he got very close to him. And he got stun assist. Unfortunately, um, the team's not doing so well. They're one tank down on the enemy at the moment. Now they're two tanks down. And he's having to retreat to the, uh, well, going up the west side of the map because the enemy is getting closer. In fact, it looks like they've nearly captured the castle. There's only an Object 263 inside the castle grounds. But unfortunately, he's got a Death Star in there with him. We're looking towards the tanks, but we can't see them. The ones where we were firing at them before. There's an IS-7 nearby to the left, but I don't know if he spotted that yet. There he is. Okay, and he's getting a request for fire on that guy. That was the back uh, back then was the crosshair symbol, which was universally known that you wanted somebody hit to hit that target. Nowadays, the symbols are a little more difficult to understand. That's why those in the know use the mods which actually make it much easier to understand exactly what your teammates want. If it's a big arrow, they're requesting fire. If it's a little arrow, it tells people that's the, what I'm targeting. Well, he is constantly moving, changing position after he shoots, but it's for the wrong reasons because they are now four tanks down, five tanks down. They are gradually losing this game. He's home to make his way towards the town to get away from the enemy. And he's being followed by the Batch at 155-58, who's also recognised the danger. Okay, there's a Death Star up there. In the um, Star Wars Imperial uh, colours. And it looks like it was near him. You can see that even back then, Tracer from RT was fairly visible, if you look for it. You can see the shells arcing through the sky. The um, automatic warning that you get for knowing that RT is firing at you is just basically a cheat mode. The easy mode for tank drivers who don't know how to play the game with RT. And it's basically to tell them, get out of the way because you're about to get hit by RT. It's, it's basically, Wargaming is cheating for the idiot players, the Muppets, who don't know how to play the game with RT. Sadly, it's going to ruin the game because it means a lot of RT players are just going to give up and go elsewhere. In fact, just today, I heard that apparently several other players have given up the game. They're no longer playing it. They've moved on to other things. They're still members of what RT nibs, but they just no longer play RT anymore. In fact, they don't play any World of Tanks at all because they've got better games to play. And I'm afraid that's what Wargaming have done. You see, they've effectively made the game much easier for the idiots, the Muppets, and are now losing customers. Rounds out. Near miss. Didn't time it perfectly, but um, they are now being capped, and they are way behind the enemy. 11 tanks down now, and there's only three left. The Batchat, the T-134, and did you feel it? And oh dear, Batchat 25 ton. And he's not loaded, so he's not a lot he can do. 
and that's it. Game over. So it looks like this one is going to be a loss, but at least he did manage to get that Bombardier. And there goes the E4, and there's the batch at 155.58, so it is a loss. Let's have a look at the end of battle stats. Well, here's the end of battle results, and yes, it was a defeat for Did You Feel It in the T92 HMC on Nebelberg. He did manage to get a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. He managed to get ten in total. And he also got a bombardier because he took out a Gorilla 15 and an FE215B 183 with one shot. That was a pretty brilliant one, actually, because they were blind. It was a blind shot at that. He fired it in where he last saw where they were, and Splash managed to take out both of them. Let's have a look at team score. Well, he didn't get the highest damage in the game. That actually went to an IS-7 with 4,274, followed by the Jagdpanther E100. He got 4,166. And the third highest damage was their Gorilla 15 with 3,811. And you can see there it's all the enemy team here. They were a very good team. Um, Fred, did you feel it? Only managed 2,162 hit points. When it came to kills, though, well, the highest scorer was three kills with a Wizzy. 111 model 15A, a TVP 251, a batch at 25 ton, I think that was the one that killed him. Uh, the IS4, they all got three kills. And did you feel he got two kills along with a number of others, including the E4, the Conqueror gun carriage, the um, batch at 155 58 on the enemy team, their E100, their IS7, and TVP. When it came to base XP, yeah, it's the enemy team again. The IS-7, IS-4 and E-100 all got the highest amount. And did you feel it? Only got 387. Way down on the total on the others. Yeah, I'm afraid he didn't have a great team. Mainly because uh, he didn't have a lot of targets he could shoot at. Most of the time, uh, the enemy wasn't showing themselves and his team weren't very good at spotting them. And as a consequence, he didn't have a whole lot of targets that he could keep firing his shells at. He fired nine rounds, got two direct hits and two penetrations and six splash. Damage of 2,162 hit points, all of it at more than 300 meters. He received three hits, two penetrations, one non-penetration, and seven enemy vehicles were damaged, two were killed. 1,560 hit points of stun assist of six stuns. On a premium count, he earned 43,241 credits, but after repair and ammunition resupply, actually made a loss for the game of 11,267 credits. He earned 581 XP, 87 for playing in the platoon, and 668 altogether. So, not a great game, other than the fact that he did manage to get a bombardier out of it, which I suppose is some form of compensation, as well as the fact that it was a blind bombardier. I hope you enjoyed that replay. If you did, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.